If you're studying for a big herbology test like finals, year ends, clinic entrance exams, or boards, you'll probably want to be familiar with which herbs are contraindicated during pregnancy. So instead of giving you a big list to memorize, let's briefly discuss why certain herbs might be contraindicated during pregnancy, and hopefully that will make some of these herbs easier to remember when you get to your test. So generally speaking, there are three reasons why an herb might be contraindicated during pregnancy. It may be toxic, it may have a strong action of invigorating blood, or it may have a strong downward nature or descending action. So first, let's look at toxicity. Toxic herbs tend to have a very strong or harsh effect, and of course this is bad when you're pregnant. So let's think about which of our herbs are toxic in nature. Well, an obvious place to start is the category harsh expellents. These are herbs that strongly drive out water through the large intestine. They cause you to pass water anally. And pretty much all of these herbs are toxic in nature. That's why they tend to have a smaller dosage, and that's why they're pretty much all contraindicated during pregnancy. So Qianyotza, Gansui, Daji, and Bado are all contraindicated during pregnancy. One of our most commonly used toxic herbs is Jirfutza. Remember, Jirfutza is aconite, and it also goes by the names monkshood or wolfsbane because it was originally used to poison wolves. So obviously, if you use it to poison wolves, you should probably not give it to pregnant people. And this also applies to our other forms of aconite, Jirchuanwu and Jirtsawu. In the transform phlegm category, we also learned Jirtian Nan Xing, which is especially useful for treating wind phlegm. So notice that all of these herbs have jir in the name, which means they've been processed or prepared. So these herbs are toxic in their raw form, but we prepare them or process them in certain ways to reduce their toxicity, but we still don't use them in cases of pregnancy. Notice one that's missing from this list is jirbancha. Now, jirbancha is usually listed as being toxic, but it's actually not contraindicated during pregnancy. In fact, bancha is often used to treat morning sickness or nausea and vomiting during pregnancy, so it's actually specifically used during pregnancy and not contraindicated. So bansha is toxic in its raw form, but, but by the time we process it and cook it in decoction, it's considered safe to use. So jirtian nanxing is out, but jirbancha is okay. Some other obviously toxic ones are our insects, chuanqie and wugong from the extinguished wind category. These are scorpion and centipede, so they're obviously toxic. Don't give it to pregnant people. And finally, we have liu huang, which is sulfur. Now this is from the category substances for topical application, so it's meant to be used externally. If you're going to use it internally, you have to be really careful with the dose because 10 to 20 grams can put you in a coma. So it's definitely toxic and don't use it with pregnancy. After that, herbs with a strong action of invigorating blood tend to be contraindicated during pregnancy. The idea here is these herbs create a lot of movement, and if we create too much movement, that can move the baby right out and cause a miscarriage. And here, it might be worth remembering that when it comes to invigorating blood, we actually have different levels of intensity. For more mild action, we say harmonize the blood. For a moderate action, we say quicken the blood or transform stasis. And for a strong action, we say break the blood, or Bensky says breaks up blood stasis. So for herbs with a more mild action of invigorating blood, these might actually be okay to use, or you might say use caution during pregnancy. But for strong herbs that break the blood, those are definitely contraindicated during pregnancy. Remember, here we're talking about treating fixed abdominal masses or breaking up accumulations. So that is obviously not something you want to do when you're dealing with a pregnant patient. So when you look at the category herbs that invigorate blood, most of these herbs are contraindicated during pregnancy or we at least say use caution during pregnancy. But those ones that break the blood and treat abdominal masses are definitely contraindicated. But then remember that we do have some herbs outside of this category that also have additional actions of invigorating blood. 
So Mudan P cools the blood, but it also invigorates blood. Chu Mai from the drain dampness category also breaks up blood. And Pu Huang cattail pollen is in the stop bleeding category, and it also has an action of invigorating blood. And this one, we say that the raw form is contraindicated because it can cause uterine contractions. And finally, herbs with a strong downward action or descending nature also tend to be contraindicated during pregnancy. Again, if we're creating a lot of downward movement, we might inadvertently move the baby down and out and cause a miscarriage. So one group of herbs we might look at is the purgative category, which is part of the downward draining category. So because of their strong downward action, all of these herbs are contraindicated during pregnancy. But then we have other ones like Ma Chi Xian and Shi Gan from the heat toxicity category. Ma Chi Xian is kind of interesting. Bensky describes this one as having a slippery nature. Now, I don't think he ever actually elaborates on what it means for an herb to be slippery, but I'm just imagining the baby slipping right out when you don't want it to. Hu Jiao is a little bit weird. This is from the warm the interior category, but it's just pepper, which it doesn't sound like it should be that bad, but we do describe it, this one, as having a strong descending action. We say it drives qi downward in cases of vomiting fluids or food stagnation. But I'm assuming this is referring to larger dosages used in decoction because I'm pretty sure pregnant people still put pepper on their food and they turn out just fine. Uh, Gui Ban and Bie Jia are turtle shells from the Tanafai Yin category. They have a strong anchoring function for yin deficiency with yang rising, and I think of anchoring like moving downward. And then we have Shi Xiang and Niu Huang from the aromatic substances that open the orifices category. With Shi Xiang, we say it hastens delivery and facilitates the downward passage of stillborns. And with these, when we say open the orifices, that really means open the sensory orifices or open the heart orifices. But I also think about this as opening the lower yin orifices and just having things fall out. So a few things to point out here. One, sometimes going from the books, it can be really difficult to tell if an herb is really strictly contraindicated during pregnancy or if it's just use caution during pregnancy. For one thing, Different sources sometimes say different things, both in terms of our classical sources and our modern textbooks. But also, Bensky is just kind of sometimes ambiguous about this. He'll say things like relatively contraindicated during pregnancy or use great caution and only when necessary. So for those, I'm just gonna say they're contraindicated. The other thing to point out is on a test, you may or may not get questions that are just like, which of the following herbs is contraindicated during pregnancy? I think what tends to be more likely is you would get a case study where a patient is pregnant and also has a certain condition. And then it will ask, which herbs would you prescribe or which herbs would you add to the formula? And in that situation, you would know that you should cross out any answer that has these contraindicated herbs in it. So that might be the way you see it come up on a test, and that's why knowing these herbs is important. And when it comes to herbs where we use caution during pregnancy, we're kind of dealing with the same situations. The herbs are either slightly toxic, they invigorate blood or have a dispersing nature, or they have a descending action. Like a lot of our herbs that regulate qi have a descending function. They move rebellious qi downward, so we use caution during pregnancy. But here we could add a number four, which is some herbs we just know through historical or empirical use that they cause uterine contractions or they hasten delivery, and therefore they should be used cautiously during pregnancy. For example, Chan Tui was historically used to promote labor and promote the expulsion of the residue of the birthing process, so use caution during pregnancy. Or Chershurger expels retained placenta, so use caution during pregnancy. Or we have things like Shanja, hawthorn berry, which can cause fetal death in large doses. So large doses of Shanja are contraindicated. 
But when it comes to herbs where you use caution during pregnancy, that list is much longer. So if you want, I made a handout you can download. It's actually several handouts put together. It has the list of herbs that are contraindicated during pregnancy, a combined list of cautions and contraindicated herbs during pregnancy, some information about the 18 incompatible herbs and the 19 antagonisms, some basics about drug-herb interactions, and herbs with special cooking instructions. So these are all topics that show up on the NCCM boards, as well as year-ends and clinic entrance exams. So it's good to look over. If you want to get it, there's a link below where you can enter your email address and I'll send you the handout, as well as some other resources that will help you study for your herbology exams. I have a lot of videos, handouts, and practice tests scattered throughout the YouTube channel and the website tcmstudy.net. So I'll send you links to those as well. So that's it for this one. If you want to review some other topics that tend to come up on herbology exams, check out these videos and I'll see you in the next one.